Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. In today's video, we're gonna be building something that looks a little bit like this. For want of a better word, it's an expanding item input field. Uh, it's basically a field that's gonna allow our users to add in multiple entries into what will appear to be a single field to them. Um, we're gonna use some tips and tricks on how to get that done. But first, quick intro. My name is Colin Kelly Cook. I'm a Power Platform developer with Fluid SharePoint. Please like, share, and also subscribe to the channel so you get all my latest videos. Um, let's jump straight into today's video. So I've just got a blank canvas app here. Um, basically, what we need to do though is we need to start with a data source. Now, normally I'd be working with SharePoint lists. We can use Dataverse, Excel spreadsheets if you're that way inclined. Um, but for this one, I'm just going to use an internal data source. It's a really good practice to get into if we do building prototypes, because we don't have to build any lists or anything in the background. However, we do need to be aware that anything that we put into these data sources while we're building our app or while we're using our app will be lost once it's closed, so we don't get to keep anything. So let's quickly use the function clear collect. So if you guys don't know this one, um, it basically sets up a collection um, and clears it, and then we're gonna collect some information into it. So I need to tell it the name of my data source. I'll just call it data source for simplicity. And then we need to give it some records. I'm gonna give it some very simple records just so we can see what we're doing while we're building. And uh, let's give that title uh, item one. Another record title item two. So there we go, we've got a data source now, which is in our app on start that's got um, item one and item two in it. We're gonna add some more to it and we're gonna remove some as we build the app, um, but that should get us going for now. So, the first thing we need to do, we're actually gonna use a gallery. So, although in our um, form it's gonna look like people are adding items into a field, they're actually adding it into a gallery which is a separate data source. So here we add a blank vertical gallery, connect that up to our data source. So now we want to edit the, oh, went to go over here. We want to edit the actual template there. I'm just going to bring the template size down. I'm going to give this a specific size of just 50. And then I'm going to add a label in there just so that we can see some items. So this item dot title. So we need to make sure now that we put our um, formula into our app on start that we run our on start. As you can see, I've built it, but there's nothing in there yet. That's because we need to run our on start. And there we go. Now our data source is populated and we can see them building up here. So for simplicity's sake, I'm just gonna move this over here. Right now, let's give this a border so that we can see. Let's just drop that to two and give it a nice nice purple border so that we can see that this is our gallery here okay so if anyone watched my last video this will make sense for those of you who haven't check out my last video around how we do dynamic sizing using functions and um, so that we can get this to work now I want this gallery to only be the same size as the number of items within it so what I need to do is open up the height of the gallery and I want to say that this is the um, it's itself dot template height so this is the height of the single item within the gallery and I want to times it by the count rows of self dot all items so that's gonna say all the items how many rows are there times that by the template height so self.template height times the count rows. Now there is also some padding in there. So we can see that there's template padding. I'm just gonna drop that out for now. Obviously we could include it in the formula, but for simplicity's sake, let's drop it out. So now what we can see is I've got um, my gallery that is the same size as the two items I've got in there. Now, as you'll have seen from the initial, we have an add button that moves up and down with the gallery. So let's add that in. So we take a new icon and add, and we're gonna add it here. Now, just quickly, again, if you check back on my other video, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna center 
the x and y of this. So I'm going to do the app dot width. Take the self dot width and divide it by two. That should be take take the self dot width. Divide it by two just to put that in the center. And we're going to copy that across. I'm going to put that in the y and app dot height. Again, check out my previous video, which will explain a little bit more what that means and how we did that. Basically, what that's going to do is it's just going to center the gallery into the middle of my app for me. Now, my plus button, if I just put it here and we'll put an on select. Now, the first thing we want to do when we on select is we want to patch our data source with our defaults data source. And we're going to add a new record. So we need the field title and we're going to just put new item. So when a new item is added, we add a new item. Okay, so let's just move this out of the way for now. So if I press plus, so you'll see the um, new item got added, the gallery expanded and everything stayed in the center. Boom, boom, perfect. Now actually what I don't want to do, I don't want that to be moving up and down. So I'm just going to set the Y to a specific height for this. So I'm just going to set it to say, let's say 400. Okay. Okay, but I want my plus to appear to be part of the expandable gallery. So I want it to remain here so that every time I add a new item, that moves down with the gallery. So I'm just going to run my on start and clear that again. Let's just quickly chuck the size of this down to a nice 40. 40. And let's just move it up here. And what I want to do is I want to put that in the middle of the gallery. So again, I'm just going to use my X's and Y's. So I want to take my gallery 2.x and I want to add gallery 2.width minus self.width. Let's put all of these into brackets divided by two so all i'm doing is i'm just finding the white space either side the white space either side of the item that i'm trying to center adding it onto the x um so here i've got the x of my gallery on the left hand side i'm finding out what the width of the white space is between the left hand side and the right hand side and then dividing it by two so that I end up dead center. And then for my Y, I want the gallery two dot Y. So that's the top of the gallery plus the gallery two dot height. So that's always going to be just below the gallery, no matter what the height is. As the height changes, that's going to move down as well. So I'm just going to add a tiny little buffer just so that it slits, sits slightly below. Uh, let's just change the color of that so that it looks a bit nicer there. A nice little purple. Oh, actually, let's go with a nice little green so that it's slightly different. All right. And so now what you'll see has happened. If I click add, the new item was added. The gallery shifted down and my plus moved down as well. So now it looks like we've aimed adding items into our multi select. Now, obviously, I'm just patching those in, but if you wanted the plus to open a form and come back and add that item in, then you could do that as well. So you can see how quickly this can expand, but it looks really good. Now, one of the things we want to be careful of, though, if we keep adding items in, we're going to disappear off the page. So we need to have some sort of control around when that's going to end and how it's going to stop. So let's quickly rerun our on start. So let's make a calculation. So one, two items there. If I had three, four, five, six. So about six items is where I want to stop. So we can use that to put an if statement into our gallery and also into our plus so that we don't actually go any further down. Um, in this instance, I'm going to use the, the gallery because I have this file, because I have my gallery height set to use the template height times the count rows self all items um, i'm going to use that now what i'm going to do 
I'm going to put an if statement in here. So if count rows sell for all items is greater than six, I'm just going to multiply by six. However, if it's less than six, I'm going to multiply it by the count rows sell for all items. So here I've got my template height times, and then I'm using an if statement. So it's going to say, okay, if the all items is greater than six in my gallery, we're just going to have it times by six. So it will never go above. However, if it's less, we'll count the rows and we'll multiply it by that. So let's give that a test. So one, two items, three, four, five, six. And there we go. So then the gallery stops moving and the plus stays at the bottom. So let's uh, take navigation off, show navigation. Navigation for me, I prefer because it just looks a lot nicer than the scroll bar on the right. Scroll bar on the right popping up kind of feels like you're falling out of the app. So let's re, um, so actually, so, so now let's do um, a quick test. So what if we want to remove items? So let's go into our template and add in a little cancel icon. Let's chuck that at the end. Get a nice, nice little looking height. Just drop that in there. Change the color to a red. And on select, let's just say remove. So remove, then we need to tell it the data source we want to remove from and what we want to remove, and we want to remove this item. Cool, so now what we can do, let's play our app. We can start removing items. Bump, 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 and adding items. Bump, 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 bump. Do, do, do. Perfect. Now that took not very long at all. I'd say under 10 minutes. And already we've got a pretty slick looking, looking app there that does some pretty cool stuff. Okay, so let's take this one step further. I mean, that's great and that works in that we have um, quite a nice up and down and the gallery is expanding. But what, for example, if I didn't want to have that moving up and down. Maybe I've got a form above it and a form below it. So maybe I've got a specific height for my gallery. So let's just say we set the height. Come on, Power Apps. Let's just set the height specifically to six items. So I only ever want it to look like there will be six items and then I want it to expand as, t as things go on. And for the, for the Y, let's just bring it up. Bring it up to 300, a little bit higher there. Now, my plus button is great, but it's at the bottom, so that's not going to look too good if my um, gallery already has that height. I mean, it's just going to add items into a box, which again is great, could be exactly what you need. But one of the things that I like to do is I want to put my plus underneath each item. So let's go to the X. Now, I'm not going to put it in the middle, I'm just going to add a little bit of buffer. So I'm going to say I want it from the left hand side, just 10 in. And now let's go to the Y. So now we can be a bit clever here. We can say gallery two dot Y. That's where we want it to be. Plus in brackets um, gallery two dot template uh, height times count rows gallery two dot all items. Close. So what we're saying here is we're gonna go from the top of the gallery plus the template height times how many rows are in there. Now again, if we click that, that's great. Look, oh, as we add it, it moves down two, three, four, but then it keeps moving when we go down. We want it to stop once it gets to the six. So we need to put a uh, if statement in here. So again, we want to say if. So if, if count rows gallery all items is greater than six, then just times it by six. Otherwise, count the rows by all of the items. So we just need another bracket on there. So let's get rid of a few of these. Three, four, five, six. So now we've got an add um, and actually, let's just move that into the middle. It might look nicer. 
gallery two x plus gallery two dot width take self dot width put that in brackets and that in brackets and divide it by two Bop. now it's in the middle now we can add items in two three four five six and when we reach the bottom if we keep adding it's not going to add any more in there and then if we remove them it's going to come back up with it bingo um i hope you enjoyed the video please remember to subscribe uh, like the video comment uh, i've got so many videos coming up that's why i'm trying to bring them out a little bit quicker um some videos that you guys have asked for as well so we're working up to those working on some little tips and techniques which we will get to eventually so see you guys in the next video Thank you.